Hey guys, it's Amy, and today I'm coming back with another video, and this time instead of books or whatever, I wanted to talk about a movie which is going crazy right now, um, and that of course is Star Wars The Last Jedi. This whole video is basically going to be one big spoiler, um, putting that out there right now because I can't really do a review, a honest review without putting in spoilers. So with that being said, everything from here on out is going to be spoilers. So I wanted to start off with talking about um, the biggest thing that everyone's going on about, um, and that is, of course, the relationship between Kylo Ren and our main lead, uh, Rey. And let me put in my two cents about this. I am not a big fan of this pair. Well, I'm torn about it because on one hand, I don't think Rey needs anybody. I don't think she should be with anyone. I think she should be all by herself. But on the other hand, I feel like it would actually bring a whole nother like aspect to the whole Jedi world because traditionally they were never allowed to be married and or like marriage, love, kindness, not kindness, but um, that compassion for each other and whatever, emotions and whatnot. That's all bad stuff. Don't go anywhere near that. Um, almost like a priesthood. Um, in terms of marriage or whatnot, priests are allowed to have emotions, but um, they're not allowed to get married, they're not allowed to have kids, they're not allowed to fall in love or have a romantic partner. Um, and I was okay with that originally. In the original series, I was like, okay, because they did kind of make it sound like a religious order, but now it's almost like whoever's born that way you know, like, whoever's born with the Force is automatically a Jedi. You know, there is no, oh, we want you in our Jedi Order. Uh, you have to try out, you have to train, you have to do whatever, and that's the choice that you make. Um, versus, because I feel like it stinks if you're born with the Force, but you fall in love with somebody. Like, that stinks. Like, that's, that's not really fair. So, part of me does want Rey and Kylo to get together just so they can put an end to that whole they're not allowed to be married, they're not allowed to have kids, they're not allowed to fall in love, like that whole area of the Jedi. But if they don't, I'm okay with that too, because like I said, I think Rey really should be her own woman. Um, but I have heard some people say, oh well, she's not the one, she, like, I don't want them to date because she needs somebody, I want them to date because he needs somebody. And I can say that, you know, I can get on board with that. Um, so I'm not a Raylo shipper at all. Well, that's where it's complicated. Like, I, ugh. I'm not a love story person, really, so I think that's really what's holding me back. But if they had to be together, this would be the ship that I would be most on board with versus any of the other ships in the movie so far. Which brings to me to my second point about this movie. Who cares about Rose? I mean, she's a perfectly decent character and I'm glad they're adding some diversity in their cast with her being Asian. I think she's actually Vietnamese, like that's the actress, she's Vietnamese, um, and I'm all for that, that's fine. But why does she have to be um, Finn's love interest? Like, wh what was that about? And why did they have, like, I feel like the role they made for her was weird. Um, mainly because her entire section with Finn, not necessarily, not necessarily like the romance aspect, just her whole section with him. I feel like Finn and her both had like useless scenes. Every single one that they were in, I was like, okay, can we skip on to like Ray and uh, Luke on the island? Uh, can we skip back to um, Poe trying to take over the rebel ship so he can do whatever? Like, can we go back to those scenes? Those are way more interesting and character building and learning about the Force and everything like that because we're kind of learning whole new aspects of the force that we've never seen before. Can we go back to that please? Versus, oh no, we have to release all the horsey weird creatures. Like, that's a fine plot if you want to do Black Beauty, but we're not doing Black Beauty, we're doing Star Wars. So I feel like all of their scenes were just useless. The casino scene was ridiculous. Why was it even in there? It was like way too long, way too boring. There was no point because here's what happens. They go to this casino looking for a, like the master locksmith guy, whatever, block picker, and they find him. He doesn't say one word, he's just there. And then they leave, and then, well, they get captured, and then they break out of jail after finding a new lock picker guy. So it's like, what, what was the whole point of the first guy? And then they go and they disarm the shields or whatever. But it's like, uh, they don't even, like, like they disarm the, um, the lights, like they, the light speed tracker, so the bad guys can't track the rebels through light speed. 
But this is where it becomes pointless because two seconds later, um, I cannot remember what her name is and I don't know, everyone's gonna be like, fake fan, but whatever. The woman with the purple hair, she smashed basically the Jurassic Park lady. She smashes through the bad guy's ship, destroying the whole darn thing anyway. So what was the point of that whole side quest of Finn and Rose and I went to see this movie with my family, uh, my uncle, my cousins, uh, my siblings, and we all talked about it afterwards. And my brother and my uncle were both saying um, the reason why they had that side quest was to show that they tried multiple things and it didn't work. And that's fine. In fact, it's kind of realistic, but we're also talking Star Wars. There's nothing realistic in Star Wars. Um, so, why, like that just, it's a time waster. It's a complete and utter time waster to have that whole segment in there because you have them go on this huge freaking long quest just so it to fail. And when it failed, it wasn't even like a good fail. You know how some movies were halfway through the actual film, they fail at something and then they're like, we're gonna come back stronger, we're gonna take them down. No, this failure is like two thirds of the way through the movie and then they're like, oh, whoops. And then, boom, solution. And they don't even do anything to help the solution. So this failure didn't help any character growth, didn't help any like personality building, um, learning about these characters, like what makes them characters. Because, I'm sorry, that whole scene with the casino, like, or whatever, where Rose and Finn were talking while they're watching the horse thingies run around the, the track, and she's like, let's talk about social issues. You're in a Star Wars film. The whole darn thing is a social issue. I mean, if you really think about it. So, I don't know, I just felt like it was crammed down your throat. Social issues and whatnot are great if you do them, like, the right way. Just like in Twilight, how they tried to have, like, a serious abortion discussion. You're Twilight. Like, please don't bring up abortion. Please don't bring up, like, pro-life versus pro-choice. Like, those are serious things. But don't put it in Twilight. You make it sound stupid then. Just like these social issues, unless you're gonna do it right in Star Wars, don't put it in Star Wars. Besides, the whole darn thing is a giant social issue anyway. Ugh. Um, so that was annoying. There were some scenes that I really, really liked though. Um, I'm gonna talk about them really quick right now um, because I don't want this whole thing to be a negative review. I have to talk about the good stuff too. The scene where Kylo Ren and Rey turn back to back and start fighting for each other, that was epic. That whole scene was great. The choreography, the, um, the camera work, the chemistry between the two characters, um, everything was just perfect. Um, that scene was just awesome. And then there was also the scene on the island. Most of my favorite parts were um, consisted of Rey and Kylo, which was odd. Um, but I loved the force bond between them. That was really fun. And it's something that we haven't seen before. Like, we've seen the ghosts come and, like, talk to different Jedi. But that doesn't necessarily show, like, a bond. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm dead and I want to come talk to somebody because I can appear to anyone I want. Versus this force bond was like, at random times, things will happen. Now, here's the thing. Everyone was saying, oh, well, it doesn't really mean anything because Snoke was the one um, doing it. Like, he was the one creating this, so it doesn't really say anything for Rey or Kylo. I disagree because, remember, at the end of the movie, um, after Snoke was killed by Kylo, like I said, there's going to be major spoilers, um, they have another connection moment where she closes the ship door in his face and he's like sitting there like holding the dice or whatever in his hands and they disappear like that was that was a connection outside of Snoke so and I also feel like um like the force is easier to use on people who are already kind of like you know you're easy it, um I have to try to figure out how to explain this um so in the first movie in The Force Awakens um when Kylo tries to brain pick uh Poe um, at the beginning of the film, it's very easily, the information he wants is very easily given up, um, but when he tries to do it to Rey, it's very, very difficult. In fact, he fails at getting the information out of her head. So, in my head, I'm thinking that the Force is, like, when you're forcing, sorry for the pun, somebody to give up information or if you're forcing them to do something, if they don't have the Force, it's very easy. If they do have the Force, it's very hard. Um, 
But if you're trying to create a channel with somebody uh, with the forest, it's very easy with the forest versus without, so it's like opposite and switched. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so, and when you're already kind of connected, I think emotionally, because I feel like the forest is very, it's, it's emotion based, because when um, any of the Skywalkers, uh, I can't even talk, any of the Skywalkers, whether it's Anakin, Luke, Leia, um, Kylo Ren, I mean, he is technically a Skywalker, um, whenever they get angry or sad or whatever, their emotions are really strong, craziness happens. And then when Rey, when she's fighting Kylo in the first movie, she gets really emotional and she's able to beat him. Like, the, um, and the Jedi are always saying, like, oh, anger, 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 like these very powerful emotions. So, in my brain, Rey and Kylo are able to create that bond because they're feeling so emotional towards each other. Whether it's love, uh, companionship, whether it's just that feeling of, you understand me. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, we're gonna have to wait for the next movie. A lot of people have been saying it's love. If it is, fine. I don't care. It better be handled right though, because if it's not, it's just some cheesy romance story. Heck to the no. Like, that's just not gonna fly. Um, so... I think that they had a connection regardless of what Snoke was gonna do. I think Snoke manipulated the moments when they had their connections, but I think even if Snoke hadn't touched anything, they would have had that. Um, and I think Snoke just messing with the whole force field, whatever, he triggered it. So at the end of the movie, they had another one. And I hope, I hope, I hope in the next movie that they're still gonna have that connection and things will still be popping up because that would be actually really funny if it's handled really well. Because at the beginning when they first realized like, oh my gosh, we're having a connection or whatever, it was funny where she like tries to shoot him and he's like, oh my God, like you see him like jump because he thinks he's just been shot. Um, and he's like running out into the hall and she's running outside and they're all going crazy. That was kind of funny, like that's a good scene because it's both of them trying to figure out what the heck is going on. But I think you could also do a lot of other stuff with it. Um, both emotionally, both character building, uh, funny, everything. I think there's just so many possibilities with that connection. And they better not drop it just because Snoke is dead. No. And I've also heard a lot of people um, saying stuff like, oh, it doesn't fit into the other Star Wars movies, it doesn't work, it's not really a Star Wars film. I beg to differ. Like, this is a very much a Star Wars film. Um, it's a different Star Wars film. Um, I thought the pacing was slightly odd compared to the other ones. I actually went back and watched some of the original ones again after I saw The Last Jedi just because I wanted to refresh my memory on some things. And when I went back and watched um, A New Hope or even The Force Awakens, um, I noticed that the pacing was so, so different from The Last Jedi, which I think is why a lot of people said it's so different. Like the movie in and of itself isn't Star Wars. I think they're just confusing the pacing because if you think about it, a New Hope, they have mission, 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 mission. And it's main characters, main characters, main characters, every single scene, all together doing their thing. There's a couple split off moments, just like in The Force Awakens, same thing. It's main characters, main characters, main characters, mission, 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 and then a couple split off things. In The Last Jedi, it's one major uh, setup. Uh, the rebels trying to get away from this ship that's coming after them. So a lot of the main characters are stuck in the exact same setting the whole movie. And then every other scene is jumping to a new cast of characters. So there's Rey and Luke on the island, which also combines Kylo Ren to that whole situation. And then there's, um, what the heck, there's Finn and Rose going off and doing their side quest. And then there's General Hux doing his thing. And General Hux I don't really consider as much of a side quest because he's kind of in the same situation as the rebels they're stuck in the same position the whole movie so uh, i just feel like the pacing was weird because i thought the movie felt really long even though it really wasn't um it wasn't long and boring i just felt like i don't know it felt weird because i kept thinking oh my gosh we're still in act one because the rebels hadn't changed position so I was like, oh my gosh, act one is still happening. And then I didn't realize it was the end of the movie until bam, the credits started playing. And I was like, where was I for act two and three? Like what happened? Um, I did two and three, uh, that's awkward. Two and three. So 
with the other films, it felt like it flowed better because it was the characters were moving from different locations constantly, well not constantly, like they would go to a certain spot, spend a couple scenes there, find a new mission, go on to that. It's like almost playing a video game or something like that or a board game where you have to keep moving your pieces in a straight line or wherever. It has to continue forwards down the path towards the end. And you can kind of guess when it's nearing the end. Versus with this one, it was, um, you don't know where you are in the film at all because it's going forward three spots, jumping back two, going forward one spot, jumping back three. And it's like, whoa, 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 all the time. So it was almost like, it, it felt like Dunkirk, the movie by Christopher Nolan. That's what it felt like because it was one big setup and a bunch of different plots taking place in that one setup. Now, I have to say this really quick before I end the video. I loved that. I thought it was great, even though I was confused sometimes. When I finished the movie, I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually really cool. Because you could, it was taking one situation and diving into all the little bits and pieces of it. And that was great because, you know, a lot of movies that just keep going along, going along, they overlook a lot of stuff that you could dive into within each scene. There's countless times when I'm watching a movie and I say, that scene should have been way longer, but it wasn't. This movie felt like one gigantic scene. And that was great because you got to dive into so many different elements of it. So I personally like that filming style. Um, I am really looking forward to the next movie. If I had to rate this one, I would say a 7 out of a 10. Um, it wasn't the best Star Wars. It definitely wasn't the worst, but it was a little bit better than average. Um, so yeah, 7 out of 10. It was, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and leave your comments down below what you thought of this movie because I personally really enjoyed it and I want to hear what you guys have to think or what you guys think about it too. I know there's a lot of controversy about this film so let the games begin down in the comments. Alright, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.